Welcome back, everyone. Let's talk a little bit about mic positions because it's a question I get a lot, but it's also something that I see uh, messed up a little bit, especially by students when I give lectures. So I just want to get, you know, some general knowledge out there. It's not like I am, you know, the super expert in the field. I'm not an engineer. I'm not a, a recording engineer. So my knowledge of the topic is limited too, but there's some general basics, I think, that we can get out there and then um, you will probably find it easier to make good choices when you work with sample libraries, but also when you're mixing live stuff. As a general rule, I would say if the full mix that the library comes with sounds good and it achieves what you want to achieve, just stick with it. Just use that. It's fine. You don't have to mess with the mic positions just because they're there. If there's not something specific that you want to accomplish, something that bothers you about the full mix and you're like, ah, I wish it sounded more like this, then don't change it. You're not required to use all the mic positions all the time. They're already included in the full mix. And the full mix was done by someone really smart who probably created a mix that would be considered normal or standard or, you know, um, the most uh, people-pleasing mix in a way. You know, the, the thing that would be acceptable in a variety of genres. So unless you know specifically what is bothering you about it or you specifically want something else, just leave it. Now there's this strange um, thing that goes around, especially amongst students. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where that's coming from, but I know a lot of students that use the close mics. And then they think they have to like use the close mics and then add reverbs and delays and all kinds of stuff to place the instruments in the room. And then I hear the mock-ups and I'm like, why does it sound mono? Like, why does it sound so small? This library comes with, you know, these beautiful premixes and with hall mics and surround mics and everything. And why does it sound so tiny and so strange? And it's because they've been taught to use the close mics and then to use all kinds of software to simulate a room. Now, where this is coming from is in the olden days, olden days, like 20 years ago, olden days, <laughs> um, sample libraries were still sampled um, very dry and not in the beautiful halls that we have now. I mean, they existed, but they weren't used for sampling. Um, there was this school of, you know, make them as dry and sterile and, and just clean as possible. And then I think probably with East West, I would think, um, there was this new movement of why don't we just sample the instruments the way they're sitting in the room already with all the mic positions and we get the hall onto the samples then we don't have to deal with this entire thing where we need to use multiple reverbs and play around with pre-delays and panning and like stereo delays and EQs and all kinds of stuff in order to simulate a room and people sitting in different spots in the room. So a lot of people think they still need to make that effort. Most modern libraries are recorded with the people already sitting in the stereo field. So you don't have to do anything. Not if nothing bothers you and they're already sitting where you want them to be sitting, just leave it. There's no panning is necessary. No delay is necessary. No EQing is necessary. It's baked in. It's baked into the samples. It's already on the mics, exactly the way we would record it at a real session. So sure, sometimes I have it where I'm like, hmm. I really wish, you know, the trumpets set a little bit further to the right. And then, you know, I might do a tiny, tiny bit of panning further to get them a little bit out of the way. Or, you know, there, there are moments where I want to pull it apart a little bit more or something. But that's not the norm. Normally, they're already sitting where they should be sitting and you don't have to worry about it. So 
using the close mics is not a great idea. Often those are also mono mics, which means your entire thing is going to sound very mono. And it's basically the worst thing you can do, unless that's really the specific sound you're going for. But um, let's go over the general mic positions and what they're usually used for. Because the main mic is usually not the close mic in a mix. So the main mic that is going to be used, or the main microphone position, I guess, is the tree mic. The tree mic is actually three microphones, uh, left, right, and a center one. I've sat in on many mixes, and that is usually the one that is used the most, the loudest in the overall mix. That is the one, if you're turning on the full mix in a library, probably 90% of that is going to be the tree mic. So that tree mic, Deca tree mic, um, is these three microphones, they're hanging above the conductor. So if you're conducting at a stage, those mics would be exactly above you and they're giving you the conductor's perspective from the top. So they have the room on it, it gives you a really nice stereo field, um, it gives you depth, like everything sounds sort of pretty much like the conductor is hearing the music. So that's that should be your go-to. 90% of the time, that's going to be your, your main mic to start your mix from. And then the other mics are mixed into that. What you can add to this is outriggers, or uh, I think some libraries call them hall mics. So those are two, um, I think, usually omnidirectional microphones that are hanging further away to the left and right. So um, since there's so much space between the conductor and the outer uh, edge of the orchestra, in between that, you have another pair of microphones that create a little more depth and especially more width. Sometimes in some halls, I actually like these more than the decatry. Uh, so you can theoretically also use those as your main mics and then mix everything else in. I have done that when there are some halls where the outriggers sounded, for some reason, sounded better to my ears than the decatry. But doesn't matter. So these are going to give you the outriggers and the decatry. Technically, the outriggers are an addition to the decatry um, to give it more width. And usually that gets you 99% there. It's going to sound gorgeous if you just use these mics. Now, what are the other microphones for? Well, you have you usually have overheads over the sections. That is for uh, usually in a live mix, if you want to bring out a section a little bit more here and there, you use the overheads. They also have um, a little less room on them. So if you want a slightly drier sound, you would use more of the overheads in the overall mix. Um, but those are usually really just, you know, pairs over the, um, over the different sections. And then you have the spot mics or for some libraries that those are the close mics, which are right in front of the individual, uh, players. So that would be individual mics onto the woodwinds, onto the brass. Those would be, uh, probably on the first chair of the strings usually. So first chair of the first violins, first chair of the second violins, first chair of the cellos, first chair of the basses. What did I forget? Violas. Of course I forgot the violas. I'm sorry, violas. Spot mics you would use if I have a woodwind solo and I feel like with the deca tree and the outriggers, it just kind of vanishes behind the orchestra because obviously the strings are closer and it's more people. And I feel like all oh, that flute solo vanishes a little bit in the mix and in the hall. That's when we pull in the spot mics and the overheads, but specifically the spot mics, um, the, the close mics, in order to bring out the solo more and to have more control over it. Then you can also maybe put a slightly different reverb on it and color it a little bit. You know, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. Um, so that's when we use those. Or I had a cue, a couple of cues where the trumpets were doing this really fast stuff. And that's when we would mix in more of the close mics of the trumpets because we wanted this crispiness of the trumpets in there and not the wishy-washy hall that was kind of washing out this really cool stuff that they were doing. 
Um, very often on percussion, I am um, I'm not really using the hall mics because I want my percussion to sound a little tighter. So it really depends. But so these other mics, the overheads and the spots, the close mics, you usually use those to bring in clarity for specific parts or specific instruments or to bring in some crunch, some crispiness. But the main um, mix overall is usually going to be based on the Decca tree and the Outriggers. I should note at this point that sample library developers are not necessarily consistent with their naming conventions. If the interface has a mic position labeled close mics, with some developers that's referring to the mono spot mics, whereas with other developers it can mean the stereo overheads. Likewise, some mic positions labeled hall mics are referring to the Decca tree, while other libraries use the same label to describe the outriggers or a completely different pair of mics. So I'd always advise everyone to consult the manual where this information will probably be laid out. And then you have in a lot of libraries surround mics as well. Those are um, pointed to the back. Usually we use those when we deliver a surround mix that goes onto the back speakers, basically. Um, so those are actually just recording the back and then we also just put them onto the back speakers on the left and right surround to create the feeling that you were actually in the conductor's position. That's basically what they're hearing in that moment. Um, so it's the back reflections. Um, you can use that if you want, you can also use them in a, in a stereo mix. I usually don't, but I don't think there's a rule against that or anything. Uh, if you like them and they sound great and you want more room in your thing, more than you are given with the Decca tree and the Outriggers or Hall mics, then by all means use those. But so the point is you want to choose your main mic position, usually Decca tree and Outriggers, or, or one of the two. And then the other microphones are mixed in to achieve more of a color. Like, do you want more halt? Do you want more crunch? Do you want it to sound a bit closer? Do you want it to sound further? You know, do you want to bring out specific instruments? Are there soloists? Uh, you know, are there specific things you want? So, does something need to be panned further? You know, that's what you do after. But first, pick your main mics and see how far that gets you and then mix the other mics in because you're missing something. That's the general consensus, I think. At least that's what I've been taught. And it works like 99% of the time. That's, that works. And any mix that I've sat in on, the, the first go-to is always going to be the Decca tree. The first thing that they grab is the Decca tree and just listen to that and then see, okay, this is what this sounds like. Where do we go from here? And then they will mix in the outriggers and then they will mix in the surrounds and then they will start mixing in the close mics into the instruments where they want it. They don't even use the close mics all the time. If there are no solos and the, and the, the sound is fine and they're not missing any crunch or any direct signal or any, you know, anything, then they also sometimes just turn off the close mics. You don't always need those. Same with the overheads. You don't always need the overheads. Um, sometimes you want them to bring out sections more. Sometimes you want them to get a more direct sound and less haul. Sure, totally valid. But sometimes you also don't want them. Sometimes the Decca tree and Outriggers and the surrounds sound great. This is exactly the sound you were looking for. So leave the others. You don't need them. So yeah, that's my general <laughs> PSA about mic positions. Uh, please don't turn off the Decca tree and the outriggers and the surrounds and just use the close mics and the overheads. It's not going to sound very great, especially because most sample libraries these days, they are recorded at Sony and Fox and Abbey Road and Air and uh, the Synchron stage. Those are amazing rooms. They sound great. Don't erase that. If you're buying samples, a large portion of the price, why they are so expensive, is because they were recorded in these spaces, which are incredibly pricey to be in. So 
you know, if you're using the closed mics and the overheads, you're pretty much erasing everything that's good on the sample library, everything that you paid for, you're basically taking out. So don't do that. Just, just trust your ears and trust that the engineers were thinking something when they made the full mix and when they put all those microphones there into the hall, beautifully extra for you. Just use your ears, trust your ears. If something sounds good, just use it. Don't, don't worry about it. The room mics sound great. It's exactly what you want. Just use the room mics. Don't worry about it. Just because a library comes with 30 different mic positions doesn't mean you'll have to use all of them. Just, just try them out, see what sounds best to you, put a nice reverb on it, and then just, or sometimes you don't even have to put a reverb on it. Maybe the hall mics are wet enough and there's already enough room on it and it just sounds great out of the box. I know when I get mixes from, I worked with Jake Jackson a couple of times and whenever we recorded air, those live pre-mixes that he sends to us, he also sends us all the mic positions, but usually we don't even touch them because we can usually just drop in those beautiful surround live mixes that he created and I'm like, whoa. There's no way I could have done this better. There's no way if I touch all these mic positions, I'm going to be doing a better job. So screw it. I'm just using that. Because <laughs> he knows the room. He has that beautiful console, all the, you know, he set it all up. So obviously, you know, he's going for something specific. And, you know, how, how would I improve upon that? I would not. So just use your ears and go with the flow. And also subscribe and ding the bell so you get notifications. <laughs> I hope this helps. <laughs>